It's that special time of year again, folks. It's Halloween, and if you don't do a pumpkin model, then you're not really being true to the spirit of Halloween. So this is my pumpkin king. So let's have a look how we made him in Gravity Sketch. Okay, so it's Halloween time, so here we are in Gravity Sketch. I've got a nice uh, purpley sky, and I'm going to make some Halloween-y stuff. So let's just lay down a little... Um, first of all, we'll lay down a hillock. Um, so we want something to grow a load of pumpkins on. So I'm just going to bash out. Um, let's find the right tool. So we'll go to the Volume tool, and we'll just see what the Volume tool gives us. So the Volume tool is great just for this, which is just shapes. Um, and I don't particularly care what the shapes are, it's just gonna be a hillock where we're uh, gonna grow some pumpkins on the top of it, so we might want some grass at the bottom. Um, this is how I would approach a concept uh, job with Gravity Sketch, so I wouldn't spend a lot of time on, on this bit. I would just literally just give myself something to, to start the scene, and a lot of it, a lot of this bit, might change it might be something that we delete um, I want to do something pumpkin related so I'd like to do maybe a pumpkin king or something but before I do that I need something to stand it all on so here we go this is our, our little rock scene let's just make a few rocks that we can repeat these will be the small ones at the bottom and then I'll group these so big brush group them with a purple button there we go and I'll just position some of these. Again, some of this will be deleted. Um, I don't know. Okay, so that's enough to be going on with, with the with the volume two. We'll group the whole thing. Okay, so I'm happy with that. If there's anything that I don't like, I can just go in and just move the points and just m move them around. So that's always useful. So we need uh, a pumpkin. So how do we make a pumpkin in Gravity Sketch? So we need orange, so something that's orange. So we'll do, that's not orange, is it? So let's get something that's, there we go, pumpkin orange. So that's cool, no, we don't want that. Now we do want the volume tool, that's always useful, but we want polar symmetry. So we'll bash that up to 12 and we'll keep everything else the same. So. You can see where our polar symmetry is. So if you half depress on your non-dominant hand, you can put it wherever you want to work. So we'll work with the scene here. Um, does that mean, that, yeah, I think what that meant was that my land was, well, wasn't was vertical, so we'll do that. And now let's just see what we get here. So, well there's straight away, there's a pumpkin. So that's quite useful. Um, wasn't exactly what I wanted, so we'll go with, start with it here, come out of the top, um, no, nope, didn't work again, so start here, come down and back to the bottom. That, that'll do, that's a good start. Now we'll just get rid of the radial for a minute because that's quite distracting, but now we'll edit that. So I can edit it point by point. So I can grab the points and push up and down with the thumbstick. I can move them around, I can get volumes, and I can get, I can even, with if you push up and down with these, you can even tighten an angle. Um, and it, it, it kind of helps you shape what it is you've made. So I want a big flat pumpkin. Move it in like that. In fact, the more I move it in, the tight that the, because it's staying the same size, it'll the volumes will look better, won't it? So so that's almost there now. Bit of randomness there. Yep, that'll do for me. Now we need a stalk, don't we? So um, we'll bring that down to a smaller size for a moment. And then a stalk, how would we do a stalk? So we'll use the stroke, um, which is fine. And we need some, uh, we need it to look woody. So let's go and get some reference images. So uh, I'll have all of these, I'll have all of these, I'll have all of these. And these are all just ones that I've grabbed off Tintinet. Um, and then some of these, and some of these. So the reason I've done all them is I'll put them out of the side because once I've brought them in, they're available to me as textures, and that's why I like this stuff. So if you look already, we've got a texture on that that stroke. So if we go with, let's just see what this looks like now, a bit too bright. 
this one. Yeah, it looks stocky and woody. No, actually. Yeah, that's more like it. We'll use that one. Uh, and then we'll just do uh, a stalk coming out of here, will we? No, doesn't look good because it's got an alpha. So let's just try something else. Let's try this one. No, still doesn't work. Still not happy. I'm just experimenting at the moment until I get one that works for us. Actually, I'm all right with that. Doesn't look too bad. Can I just put some more kinks in it? And then what I will do is um, I'll just adjust the adjust it a little bit. That, that'll do. Now. What I'll do is I'll add more into it, and that'll be so it make it looks a bit more natural. Remember, this is a this is the kind of thing we do for concept. We're not looking for any kind of accuracy in the model here. Um, what we're looking at is just something that looks cool. Um, we might paint over it, whatever we decide to do. Um, let's just get some green leaves going. So we'll go with a kind of a, the flatter looking material and then we'll go to our um, surface tool we'll ask for subdivision and we'll do points and we'll go one two three and let go and that gives us a leaf too dark actually um, well that's quite cool I didn't even mean to do that but the the texture that I had um, was colored um, so I'm just wondering if one of these looks better. It's got spiky leaves, I don't know. Yeah, that one would look cool. And then just change that to overall green. Happy mistake there. Uh, let's just change something that I like to do. See, see how this is sub D? Um, I can do split loops in here. So if I just open that leaf up a minute, if I do a split loop there and a split loop there, what it means is I can bring the surface up in the middle bring it down like that and that'll give me much more of a leaf shape and then bring all those points back at the end and then this one out just looks a little bit more like a leaf I think and we could we could put more splits uh, along the length but that that will do how does that look yeah that will do us my shadow on the top there as well so there we go. So there's a pumpkin sorted straight away. So that didn't take too long. So grab it all and we'll just, let's just make a few pumpkins actually. We'll just, just those leaves. Keep un, um, ungrouping it when I want to change it a little bit so that it, we, we never want it to look too repeated. Um, bring that over here. I don't want it to look too repetitive is the word, wasn't it? I couldn't get the word right then. Uh, that one will be fine. That one will be fine. So there's a, there's the star of the pumpkins, so they look good. Need some grass around here. Definitely need some grass. Um, so we'll use that same material, uh, which was the greeny one, and we'll just use the surface tool again. And we'll just do it very, very simply. So just three of them there. And then bring the blade of grass in at the top. You're not snapping it or anything there. It's not causing any problems for you there. Uh, I need more actually because I'm going to put a split loop in because I need to bend the grass, um, which I hadn't thought about until just now. So if I need to bend it over like that, so it's like a bent blade of grass. Um, bring that in. Might be a bit too busy that material, so we'll later on if it doesn't work well, we'll change that. Um, okay, so there's one blade of grass. Grab it and duplicate it. Let's change the material. Go for a darker colour here. This one. Give us some variation in the in the grouping. Uh, group it all together and then use that as a what we'd call a stamp of some description and I'm not going to do the back I'm going to try and treat this as the front here 
Uh, and this is the back, so I might do something different at the back. I might put more rocks at the back later on. Um, but I won't worry about that yet. Yeah, this, this again, could easily all change if, if I don't like it. Um, I keep thinking of changing things as I see it. So, just done that one. Okay, so we've got the basis of what we want now. It's starting to look like a scene. Um, we want to do these. Let me think. If I'm going to do a pumpkin king, maybe we want him to be... These are his minions, maybe his pumpkin minions. So... Let's think about a pumpkin king. Let's do a sketch. Um, how would we do that? So I'm going to go to a new layer. So plus one on the layer. Um, I won't lock the other layer at the moment. Um, that's fine. And then we'll go with a sketch, the ink. And we'll go with a lighter uh, color, just so as we can see it. Um, something like that. And the reason I've done that is I just want to now play around. Um, actually, I will lock that layer. Um, I won't make it transparent. We could, we could make it like this, um, completely transparent. Um, but we don't want to. We, what we want to do is leave that in situ. And... Oh, I've just messed that up, haven't I? I thought I turned it off, but I didn't. We'll get there in a moment. There we go. So the one that we're on now, working fine. And I've got no symmetry on now, so I'm just going to be able to go, I'm just going to do a rough sketch. So how, how I want this guy stood up, I want him stood here, and I want him talking down to his, his pumpkin minions. So maybe um, just do nice big feet on him uh, that will come across here. So we might have to adjust the stones a little bit. Slightly bent knees. And then he would be up here like this, as his body, and he would have his arms thrown wide. We're definitely going to have to have a pumpkin head. Um, so arms down, and then up, and then hands would be sprayed out like this. And he would have a sh like a, I think it has to be a conductor's outfit kind of affair, like a Nightmare on Elm Street kind of affair. And then obviously a pumpkin head around here. And he would be looking down at his minions and commanding them or... Actually, no, that's a good idea. Why wouldn't he be conducting them? So I'll just group all of that. It was too big there. So so maybe he's a conductor now. So I love how these things evolve. Um, so let's just group all of him. Yep, that works well. So the next thing I'd normally do is just block that out with uh, the volume tool. So volume still on radial from before so we'll turn that off and we'll go we'll give him we'll just start now and just give him something of a uh, a kind of character so i'm just going to make sure i've got none I don't, I don't want these um i don't want any material on him here is what i'm trying to say so we'll go a dark different color dark blue maybe so um let's see what happens so that would be a thigh should we no, so I was going to say, should we remove that sketch layer? Because um, we almost don't need it now. But um, yeah, actually, what I will, do, what I will do, I'll do what I just did before. I'll make that a locked layer and make a new layer. What that means is now I can separate the two. So we need a thigh, and we need a pair of pants, and then. The pants would be ballooning at the bottom like this. And then his legs would be coming out the bottom, which I'll do in another colour. I'll do that in the wood colour. We've got his body, like so. Again, this is only our block out, because what we're going to do is do it properly. We'd have a coat in here. That looks good. And then we'd have these crazy skinny arms. And he'd have his arms up in the air. And then he'd have cuffs on the arms. This hand would be the conductor's hand. So he would have his thumb coming forward. And then his hand would be out like this, holding the baton. And then we'd have the pumpkin head. Which, again, I'm not even going to bother with the pumpkin head. Because we have got pumpkins made. So, and a dicky boat. So I like, I'm liking that already. Um, definitely need big cuffs. And 
this hand will just be maybe one finger like that. So I'm feeling like that's already looking, um, that's just actually I couldn't get the feel of the head there without having a head. So there we go, that's that's what we've got, a conductor conducting his, his orchestra. So that's worked for me quite well. Now we'll probably do most of that in sub D I think. So let's just go to another layer and see how it responds to going slightly transparent. Looks fine. Another layer. We can get rid of the sketch layer now. We don't need that at all. So that looks good to me. The reason I left the feet is because I want to do that in wood. So now we're on the final layer. I can switch to a wood and I can, um, I can make just something maybe darker wood than that. I don't like that. Let's have a look at what we've got. Mm, one of these other woods would be fine. Wood, wood. How does that look? That's the volume tool, which again, not a huge. At this point now, it probably, ah, no, actually it worked. It worked well there. I didn't realize it worked that well. Um, because of the, the PNG, it's given us um, quite nice um, transparency in there. So we'll pop his legs here and then we'll make him, um, in fact his legs would be together at the bottom and I want his feet to be vines. So I'm gonna go to uh, the ink brush and just, I'll just give him a couple of calves with this first. So and bear in mind, I just decided he's gonna be made of vines. So there'll be loads of stuff going in and out like this. And this is how I'll do his hands as well in a moment. That looks fine. And actually that transparency works really well because um, it just looks like broken wood. So he's got great big feet, like so. Maybe we should use the volume tool for the toes. Yeah, that looks good. Just give him some weird looking toes. Almost claws. And then back to the this stroke and ink and we'll just get some vines crawling up him like this maybe a few coming out and they would go all through the body like so so they look good I'm quite happy with them happy with them all together so we'll just do the arms and then we'll wrap this section up so there's one arm we could use that arm again actually We'll just repeat it over here. That's that one. And then we've got to start thinking about um, the hands. So we'll do a hand will be like this. And uh, no, it won't. It's too small. So a hand will be like this. And then we'll do a finger that's made up of several parts. So one, two, and then I want a nice, uh, fingernail which would be a spike wouldn't it like that there we go so that's given me a nice um, set of fingers so that will be the one that meets the the thumb because obviously there'll be one less joint for the thumb there and then we have one two and that's all his fingers done in one go Huge, I know. So let's make it small, group it, and there's his hand. So that's looking good, and that can we can adjust that finger there, just to get his um, his baton in. So we'll just add some more um, vines that are going to help, just to give us a bit of visual interest on there. Um, we can just take that hand and duplicate it because um, what we'll do is delete those vines and we'll unlink it and then we'll move those fingers. Obviously now the thumb's on the wrong side, so we'll ungroup it, bring that one on this side, that one here. It's gonna get the thumb looking like it's accurate. And then each of the fingers needs to be repositioned. Um, so this would probably just be, um, his fingers would be out, splayed out on, on this side. So let's move these together. Yeah. Looks a bit of a mishmash at the minute, but that's fine because it'll soon be sorted. And again, we'll have some of them 
coming in like that. It's quite because it's it's concepty. It's quite okay to be loose like this. It'll just it'll look good from a distance, which is what we're aiming for. Um, let's get rid of that. They all look good. Now we'll just group them up. We can move that hand and pose it around as we as we decide what we want to do with it. I just need a, a baton, so um, there's a couple of ways we could do a baton. So, what tool haven't we used? So the revolve tool is a good one. So, the baton would be uh, black, I guess, or blacker, and we'll just go. Um, oh, I haven't set it right. So, with the revolve tool, we'll need point mode. And that's it. And we'll just do the back of the baton here. And we'll, in fact, we'll do it like that, and then we'll get rid of that texture because we don't want that. We just want a black texture, um, and then get it really small, and then change the points, as you can see. So that ability to do it after, and I'll leave that texture on actually because that broken look of the um, of the button actually looks really good. You know where the, where the texture is. Um, oh, we didn't group that one, did we? Let's group it like. No. Oh, I know why. Because we've got a v that one there. Um, I had a, a a vine there that was um, going into the hand as well. So if we do that, he's kind of holding that with his thumb. So we can we could even group that together now. So wherever we move that hand now, so he's conducting his little minions so what what one thing i want to do now is he needs he needs that head now so i'm going to unlock that other layer so we can get hold of um which layer is it it would be um this one wouldn't it yeah so so we'll unlock it um takes a minute because there's a lot of detail on there um and i've just i accidentally keep making it transparent so if we go all the way over here and then leave it and then unlock it and then what we'll do is we'll grab this pumpkin duplicate it let's bring that layer up again and we'll drag that onto that layer so he now that pumpkin is now part of this layer so we can edit it on this layer as well so if this is his head we'll make it a little bit different um, and we'll take We'll ungroup it and we'll move this a different way. And we'll kind of make this his hair, I think. Like so. That looks better. And then regroup that. So we've got his head to be able to move it around. So that's quite nice. So we've got we've got it looking quite the the pose is there. He stood above his little minions. Um doing his doing his thing. So what should we do next? We'll do his body and pants next in sub D. So we'll take uh, subdivision beta and cube. We don't want it mirrored. Um, in fact, we'll do one leg and then we'll do the we'll we'll do the other leg. So let's make it a grey. So he's got a dirty grey trousers. Um, get rid of that texture. Like that would do it. Um, and we'll just extrude that up, first of all, for his leg, before we go any further. We'll put um, splits in it this way and this way. And protect it at the top and protect it at the bottom. Okay, so what does that mean for us? So we bring that down now. And then we'll just cover it all and just smooth it down. And that'll give us, that'll round it down. As you can see, it's just rounded it a bit. I'll put subdivision on, we can see. And then his pants would be, they would balloon out at the bottom. Bear in mind, this is the back of his leg, and that, that would be his, what's going to be his hip there. But we're going to have two of these legs. So, uh, And then I want lots of splits in here, uh, because what I want to do is make it look like um, the, the, the clothing has, has, has rippled over. You'll see what I mean in just one moment. So a bit of a fold there. So this is like the... This is like the bottom of your trousers. Um, so the knee at the back has always got this in it, hasn't it? Um, it's always got like a, a couple of folds and a couple of creases. Cloth's one of those things that's really hard to 
you need, you need to invest some real time into learning how to do cloth and folds and things like that. There you go. So that will do for his trousers. Look at that when you move it out of the light. So the shadow gives you that purple look, which I really, really like. Uh, it's exactly what we need for this scene. Um, so we'll just move them down. So I'm going to delete those legs now. And delete the trousers because we've got our new trousers. And there's our two legs. And they look quite nice, so we can edit those a little bit more. Um, perhaps turn it around a bit and down a bit so it covers over those trousers. Um, if you want to move it as a group, so if you hold away from the model, hold the grip, and you can see the, if I'll make it bigger for you so you can see, hold the grip and there's a sphere inside the sphere and that gives us a, a fall off. So watch this, you can drag things around, it makes it much more like a sculpting program. So I'm dragging around it with, with a, a, like a, an area of effect fall off. So that can be quite useful. Um, this leg probably needs to go out this side a little bit and then this one down like that. Does he look good? okay? Yeah, that's fine. And then let's bring his top of his thigh in here. This is going to be under his belly, so you won't see this. Um, but we will give him a little butt. Um, Pumpkin King's butt. So I'll bring that across there, and that'll be up, embedded up inside his coat in a moment. So I'm happy with that. So um, now actually I'm going to cheat now because it's so easy just to do. Turn that upside down and you get instant sleeves. Um, so that is such a, a cheaty thing to do. But we're, we're after getting this little scene done rather than proving how amazing we are at modelling over and over again. So I'll make that smaller, make that a bit smaller. And that would go in there so now we'll make sure we've embedded that arm in in fact make sure we delete some of this transparency um, so pull it down and put the shoulder back in where it belongs that's that one done and that looks quite nice actually the sleeve I did do his sleeve up here if you remember the cuff but I've changed my mind um, or would it look better I don't know here we are changing our mind as, as always. We'll, we'll, we'll get the arm finished and then we'll see how it, how it looks. So make it bigger here. Okay, we've got something we want to delete there first. So with this one now make it bigger. I'll grab the whole thing. I want to smooth it there so I'm going to grab a group of points and just pull down on the thumbstick and that smooths it. So there we go, we've encapsulated his elbow completely. Something doesn't look right there because of the because of the elbow poking through. It doesn't look right, so I'll move it around a little bit. There, that looks good. That's that one, and that leaves us with his two things really. So it's his belly and his coat. So we'll do his coat first, and um, we'll just do it as a single polygon. I'll show you what I mean. So a sub D cube. In fact, we can do it over here and do it in low poly and then we'll, we'll put it on the model. So that would be the top, so we don't need a front face. Uh, we'll bring this down and split it down here. I'll split it a couple of times like this and you'll see why now. So if I now take this and delete all of these, but then take this one and come down this side and this one come down this side, that gives me his tail coats which we can adjust as we need to in a moment and that means that this will subdivide nicely here we'll split it once and twice and we'll and again and we'll we'll get those moved um, to look like they've got some motion in them um, and then just a few splits up here and we can remove the top as well so Now we'll just, in fact, we can just smooth it all down. The easiest thing to do would be just to smooth it. This coat would come round like this. We'll put a split in there and there so we can get that beveling a little bit. Might have to smooth the coat a little bit, but when I put the subdivision on in a moment, you'll see 
how different that looks. And his coat might flare up out at the bottom a little bit. And there would be some sort of collar in there in a moment. So that's good enough. So let's put him in and see what we get. So we can actually delete the one that we had. Get rid of his dicky bow now, we don't need that. I'm just trying to grab this. Uh, oh, I've grouped it, that's why. I just want to grab this bit. There, yeah, group that back up. Um, I keep finding things that I need to get rid of in the scene, which is a good thing. Don't want any of this rogue geometry now. Put the coat in the correct place and then switch sub D back on. Oh, didn't work. Just put it all in one go like that. Okay, and now we can just move it into the correct place bit by bit. So again, we'll off the model, hold in and just bring that down. The, so the grip brings that um, inner sphere down. And we're now we're going to pull it around. We're almost sculpting now. And we'll bring his coat around the front, like so. And you see, because we had, because we've got that um, fall off, it's it's quite fluid. I know this looks blocky. If you if you don't understand subdivision modeling, you may think this looks blocky. But in a, in a moment, as soon as we've applied the subdivision, um, you'll see why this is one of the most favoured poly polygonal ways of polygon modeling. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, there you go. A few more splits where we need it. I don't want to go too crazy. And now subdivision on. You can see there it's rounded it. So we'll just keep playing with it. Don't forget you can twist it around if you want to. Just moving each point just to see what it looks like in the scene. And then we can go in and move his shoulders. This will all be covered by a collar in a moment, so I'm not hugely bothered about this either. If you want to send this stuff to 3D modeling, you might want to make these as solid objects. I've just got this as an open face, which is fine for this. I'm doing this for concepting or just for, for to be able to paint over it. But um, if you want it to be straight away used as a model then you're going to have to make these as solid objects so when you make it from a cube at the start then just make sure that you um, leave it airtight so the cube is as, as as tight as it can be so I'm snapping these together now and I'm going to snap that I don't want to go any lower than that I think that will be fine and then what we'll do is we'll put buttons on the front um, don't need a belly actually because that coat's covered everything that we need. In fact, if I was to go and snap that one and bring that lower, then we wouldn't need anything. Um, simply because it covers all of the areas that we were going to use for the body. So that's not a huge problem. I'll put some splits in here now and then we'll get some clothing folds going on. Just a couple. Um, so just to give it a little bit of visual interest there at the front. And that will be fine. So how does he look? Let's move the light around actually. Yeah, that looks great. So we'll move the light here while we do this next bit. I just want this coat to be coming out here. I want it flapping up rather than down like that. Bring that forward. And you're controlling, you're controlling the sub D now with the with the movement of these points. Let's make a tiny little button. So we'll make a sub D cylinder, tiny one, and we'll do it with orange buttons. And we'll take that front face and shrink it down like so. And just moving it around a little bit. And then what we'll do is we'll intrude that a little bit there. And we'll grab that whole top and squash it down. It just gives us a janky little button like that. I'm happy with that. And then we'll just put those little things. Oh, I didn't like that last one. Their little pumpkin buttons, I quite like those. And then we need a, what do we need now? A bow, don't we? So what color can his bow be? Um, we'll do. Ah, no, 
decided not that colour. We'll go for bright red one for now. Uh, no, what am I talking about? It's Halloween, isn't it? So another purple one would be nice, but brighter. We'll go um, planar on the um, volume tool. We can draw a we can draw a bow now. That's like a bat bow. I love this tool. So I'm just laying down the points. Oh, I dropped accidentally then. So I'll just undo that and I'll do it a bit slower this time. One more. And finish where we started. And there you go. There's a little. What can we call these bat bow? In fact, no, it's not working, is it? The colour's not working. So what would we have? White. What would what would Jack Skeleton have? Maybe white, I don't know. Considering I haven't looked at any reference, I don't think I want to start now. Uh, and now I'm just gonna do this, watch this. And take that. And then you can just pull that out and that gives you a volume that way. And there you go. It's just quick ways of making volumes. Uh, and he would be looking down like this. Um, you can't um, uh, cut into this. Um, so this geometry here, I'd like to put a face on it. But I think what I'll do is I'll have to do something different. It's, not, it's clearly not going to work with this one. Let's move the light around and see what this looks like. Um, this hand's probably better if it comes in like this, so he's he's conducting these little guys. Um, maybe this hand just a little bit more quizzical, maybe even back a bit. This is the great thing now, you can pose this as much as you like now. So how about he, uh, let's do something really different. What if he's going to bring a leg up like this? So he's got, he's like trying not to step on them. Again, this is why I love this program because we can just mess around to our heart's content. Oh, we brought in, this is a, this is a tool that we, um, this is called a tool belt. I didn't want to activate that. So I just want to bring all of his toes together. So group them all, didn't I? And we'd have a great big foot up in the air as if he's dancing around, that's better which would mean his centre of balance is slightly off. So I'd have to bring these toes more in line over here. There you go, nothing major there. So you see how his, his centre of balance looks better there. That looks good. Now, because we've done that, I think we can go a bit crazier with this. And we'll open that up a little bit, make it a bit wider at the, at the back. The same with this one. Why don't we put more splits in there actually? That might help us a little bit. Yeah, you see, put an extra split in, it just gives us more the ability to change it a bit more. That looks good. So his tail coats are flying as they say. More splits in there. That means we can curl it right round. So the splits do help with defining the, the volume. See how that makes a big difference. Um, you couldn't do that curl without that extra polygon in there, or that extra polygon loop. These arms, I'm just looking at things that I'm spotting now. So these arms are protruding through at the back, so we'll bring them up. That's looking good there. Maybe his pants now can change color because they're all the same color. So maybe they can go ready orange. Yeah, I'm okay with that. This one now, because of what we've just done, needs to come here. This becomes his trousers need to be a little bit more like um, because because we've basically messed around with um, the posing. We've got to adjust everything around it. So his tail coat here will have to come up and come around, I believe, which will be up here over his leg. And then down here like this. More splits if needed. Be careful because it's getting a bit heavy now. If you know if you do this, just don't go crazy. If you're on the quest, this is on the rift, so it's not too much of a problem. Um, if this was on the on the quest, there might be a bit of an issue going on there with with the amount of polygons. That looks good. Should we just have a look at the? Um, the lighting a little bit. So 
Um, let's try something else. Um, in fact, no, hang on. Still not happy with this. I want more pumpkins because at the back now it was looking a bit grim there. So we'll build. There, there you go. The scene looks a bit better from there, doesn't it? So he's trying not to step on his pumpkin friends. Um, and then we need more vines first, so and we'll try different different woods for the vines. So let's just run some vines through here. So it's just vines in a pumpkin patch, they just look cool, don't they? It's like roots and a bit more visual interest. And then we'll run those roots as if it's taking over him and going up and down his his body as if the roots are, bit, are, are coming up and attacking him or, or being part of him maybe I don't know um, not thought about it that much no I didn't like that one um, the darker one just looks a little bit better with uh, just adds a bit more Craziness. That's cool. Maybe a little bit more up here, and then we'll try the lighting then once we've got a bit more with this stuff going on. There we go. So let's have a look at the lighting. Our scene's going to be from here, I think. Uh, or it might be even him standing over his his creation like this, um, or oh, not his creation, his his, his buddies. Um, so let's do that. Do we need a face on him? No, not at the minute. I don't believe so. Um, might be nice to um, try a different lighting environment now. So let's just see what we've got. Um, so let's just try some of these environments. Yeah, you can see it's. We don't want shiny coats or anything like that, do we? Let's try some of these different rooms. Wow, that's a bit bright, isn't it? Maybe we could darken that down. Yeah, that looks cool. Oops, keep hitting the microphone there. That's my fault for putting the light right in front of it. Um, or do we do it like this? Maybe. Gone a bit crazy there. Although I did like those shadows. I don't. I don't know whether now I've done that. I think I liked how I had the shadows there. So maybe bring it around the side. It's not the best best program for lighting anything, but I want to take some photographs now. That's all it is. So I'm just trying to um, figure out the best way to to light him. Now what I can do is I can put a really bright face on him. So let's. Um, Let's just go back and we'll do like a really bright red color. So, um, what's the best tool? It'll be the volume tool again. Bring that over here. And we want to pick a really bright, yeah, almost whitey color. I think whitey red color, like that. And I think I can go with the flat color, which is, yeah, that's the one. And now we can do. Um, we're on planar, so let's have a look what we've got. We've got uh, planar. Yeah, that's fine. So let's just draw some shapes and see. Oh. Material's wrong, isn't it? It's getting the right material and then the right colour. So that's the fiery red colour that we wanted. So, so let's do an eye. Might be different shapes till we get it right. Happy with that. Now we're going to need a couple of nostrils. Don't worry about where these are in space. This is I'm just doing this just so that I can have a go of all of these different shapes. So we're going to do his teeth in a different way. So his teeth would be. Um, let's just make some shapes. Think how to do this. 
No, we, we need to make the whole mouth, don't we? So I'll start at the side. Just making the proper Halloween y pumpkin teeth. Oh, I let go. But actually, another happy accident. Quite okay with that. Right, so let's move it into place and then we can see if it's worked or not. If it hasn't worked, we can redo it. So, like so. Tiny nostrils. Oh, yeah, it's worked fairly okay actually. I think might not be the best, but let's have a look if we can get the eyes looking good. And then this mouth, maybe we can utilize this mouth in a few different ways. Yeah, like so. And does that work? Does that give us a glowing effect? Yeah, not, not too bad. I think I messed up his foot there along the way, didn't I? Um, put his foot back on. Yeah, it almost works. Not quite right. Um, those eyes just need to be on a single plane like that. It's got some nastiness to it. So that'll look really good when we look from underneath like this, which is one of the views that I really want to, to focus on. So let's just get that foot going again. Make sure we're happy with this foot. Just unlinking everything so I can just make the foot bigger and nothing else. That's good, and change that lighting one more time. So we want the light to come right down over him like that. There we go. That's good. So let's get rid of all these while we're here. So let's take some photographs and see what we can come up with, and then maybe even if we get time, we can paint him up. Um, I've got to make sure that my angle's good. So got to make this is now composite you know composing a scene rather than building the scene we've got the scene built now um, or a good chunk of it um, so let's try and I'm just as I'm as I'm spotting an opportunity now I'm just moving the parts of it around so that if I'm thinking of this as the camera angle down here I'm just seeing what would look good that doesn't bend enough we've seen that so put that both ways and that means i can bend it up at the top like this so i get a better visual there that's good yeah i'm fine with that i don't like those eyes i don't know what's wrong with them um it's funny how you just get is it because they're the wrong way around or i want it to look different than a, a standard one this is me just being a, a pernickety modeler and designer now. I'm just obviously finding my own issues as we go along. No, nope, we're okay with that. So let's take some photographs. So how do we do that? So we go up to the top and we'll go basically back to the save and then snapshot. And here's our snapshot. We can feel the view, knock it right down, bring him out a little bit. What would be cool is just show you, um, I'll show you what it's like with the shadow underneath, look at that. So that would be quite a cool shot there, with the shadow on the floor. So um, I have to send him away a little bit from me. So that would be one idea. And that's just a straightforward pumpkin king from the ground up. Uh, not very dynamic to be honest. Uh, I'll take a picture anyway. So we'll let that save. That's good. So forget the ground then, and let's just take some shots from down here. Don't want. I'm just going to try and find the shot that's the the the, the hero shot for me now. Um, and I've got this real vision of being underneath like this, and he's stomping or not stomping. He's keeping his foot up in the air so he doesn't stomp on them. Maybe that foot needs to come forward a bit. So maybe we take that and we swing it up like that. So I'm definitely trying to find how this works now for, for me. And bear in mind, I'm going to paint over this. So uh, 
I've got to be happy with it as a, as a composition now. So that's a little bit too big. Move that down and out of the way. There we go, we're getting there now. So that foot is looking better. Maybe I'll group it actually so I can move it um can move it a lot easier. I've just deleted his leg, that's not good. It's because we're in here, isn't it? So let's move this here. Don't want to cover too much while I'm setting the composition up. Still not happy with the lighting, so I'm going to move the lighting around a bit now. Let's try that. Just trying different things now, just to get it to a to a point where we're happy with it for the for the photograph. We're nearly there. I like those curls at the back. So it's a really low angle. But the leg's confusing me. So maybe I have to go here like this. There we go, that's better. Now we're getting there. Now we're getting somewhere. So he's dancing with his he's dancing with his little his little buddies. Definitely getting there now. So that leg can go out more that way. No. Really not happy with that leg. Struggling like mad with the leg. Maybe like that, so he's twisting it as he's... No. Isn't it funny how you get stuck on one thing? There we go. Let's try that. Take a photo of that, and we'll have a look at that one. Now, one thing I do like to do is this, which is just in the field of... Uh, just in the, um, the depth of field. So now we can, let's just move it in and out so we can get it, the foreground, a little bit out of focus. And he's in focus. That's one. And we'll bring it all into focus now. That's two. Let's try it different angles. Let's try it from above. I'm going to do loads of these until I'm happy that I've got a real good mix to be to be painting over. And then another one from the front. And I've got this vision that this angle is the is the angle that I want. Just gotta make it work. I've just got to find a way for it to 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 read really well in the scene. It's not, it's just not getting there for me, but we'll, we'll, we'll be there in a second. There we go, almost there. I almost want that leg to be like an arm, as in swinging up and out of the way. But then I don't want it to, to cover over the face. So, there we go. Almost there. And the last one. Now what you can do, uh, you can do add quad in sketch, which is this one here with a transparent background, and watch this. You want to do some of these and put them in the scene and test them. This is so cool, because we'll move it over here now, but I can test all those things that I've just been doing. I could have just done it in the scene. Um, just do them as a little set like this. Um, so you can just try all your different, you know, you can tr just try all your different... Um, layouts while you're in the scene so you don't have to just keep sending it out um, just find the one you like and then photograph it in scene if it's if it's working and you're liking it then just turn that off and then just take it the same picture there's a transparent background so that one's useful that one's gone away so I think that might have been the one actually so if that's if that's an angle that's working for me let's just do Let's make the foreground trans um, out of focus, like so. We'll do one like that, and that's probably enough. So let's bring these little fellas back.
put them all around our main our main one. I've just accidentally took one there. And there you go, there's our Pumpkin King dancing with his, his buddies. Um, one tiny thing you might want to do, I'll just delete all them, is this. Uh, I do this a lot, watch. So I want to do what I've just done. So I'm going to put one pumpkin there, one there, one there, one there, one there, and a tiny one here, and one here. I can photograph that, get rid of all of that. And I want to do add quad in sketch with transparency on, and then that does that. Delete all of them, or if you want, do another one, but a slightly different angle, or with even with some other assets in it. Why it wouldn't let me do that then? There we go. Uh, delete all of them. And then you can layer that in the scene. And give you a bit of a background. And if you want to do photographs like that, that will definitely help. Oops, we've done it in scene again. Didn't remember. Turn off add chord in sketch. And there we go. That sends another one off to our little... Um, off to our little repository. I'll just do a few of these. And add chord in sketch. And you can really go to town with a pumpkin patch now. With no cost on resources. Because um, you've basically just done it with images. And you can go that you can just keep going with that as long as you want. Um, I'll do a couple more. And it doesn't take long for you to realize how powerful that would be because we could just layer them out into the distance now. Um, and then if we do keep taking these pictures, there's even more pumpkin dudes in the background. So if there's a whole field of pumpkin dudes in the background now, um, turn that one the other way around. And now we've got a crazy pumpkin patch going on now. So we'll do add, add quad in sketch off, transparency off, and let's just mess up the, there we go, mess up the field of view again. And we've got a crazy bunch of pumpkin kings going mad in the, mad in the pumpkin patch. Let's get a nice one there. And there we go. I'll delete that now. And that's it. So that's my Halloween pumpkin guy made in Gravity Sketch. I hope you've enjoyed watching that get made. And have a happy Halloween. If you're liking this kind of content, then give us a thumbs up on the video. This is the Pumpkin King, obviously made in Gravity Sketch. Um, it would really help us if you uh, subscribe to the channel because it lets us get more and more people interested in our work and we can share it with more and more artists who are wanting to learn to do this stuff. Um, subscribe to the channel as I say and hit the notification bell and we'll let you know when we upload content which is every Wednesday and every Friday.